Daniel chapter number 5, 6. It pleased Darius. Now this is the new government taking over. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes. A lot of people. Which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. And you thought George Washington was the first president. Now according to the Bible, first president was Daniel. Americans wouldn't know that. That the princes might give an account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Now what happened here is, what's going on? You got these princes over the entire kingdom, Medes and Persians. They report to the presidents. They are not under the king. If anything happens, the presidents will get the trouble and not the king. So you don't let it go anything over the president. Now get that. Because this is not what happens in the chapter. The king is to sit fancy free out of no trouble in his kingdom. Someone else, if there's trouble, is to be to blame. Someone else's responsibility. <clears throat> then, this Daniel was preferred above the president in prison. So he's above the above. Because an excellent spirit was in him. And we know by Daniel 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That excellent spirit is the Holy Spirit, God. And the king thought to set him over the home realm. So there are princes. Over them there are three presidents. Over the president is the king, but the king's like, okay, let's have these princes, let's have the presidents, let's have Daniel, and let's have me, the king. Daniel was already over the dead magicians. Daniel has been put into a position of leadership by God over and over. Daniel is not just some hillbilly. Daniel had wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And yet when, when God says, describing Satan, he says, Thou art wiser than Daniel. Daniel is a tough cookie. He was a responsible man like Joseph. Then the presidents and the princes that get together sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. That goes back to the last part of verse 3. The king sought to set him over the whole realm. They didn't want it. But they could find no occasion nor fault. Can they say it about you? I know they can't say it about me. But then again, I don't like where I work. But that should be no excuse. I don't like the people who I work with. That ought to be no excuse. These people don't like Daniel. And they can't find no fault. For as much as he was faithful, that's why he got these leadership roles. That's why he got where he was. That's why he got the promotion. It's not who Daniel knew besides God. It's what Daniel knew, God. For as much he was faithful, could they find no fault in you? Can they find you to be faithful? I, I've had the faithful part. Man, if I don't show up to work when, I, when, I'm, when I'm supposed to be there, man, they start calling my phone number. <laughs> I've had that happen several times. You know, One time over something the alarm clock, one time I thought it was a different day I was supposed to. And they're texting calling to me. You're not here. Something's wrong. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. 
Daniel did his job the way it was to be done, exactly how it was to be done, and he didn't steal time. I am not a Daniel. So when you got that hymn, Dare to be Daniel, I ought not sing that song. Because that's not me, I'm sorry to say. That is not my testimony. I guarantee if I, when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, I'm going to be charged with the theft with taking some of the company's time and using it for other things. I have done many errors in my job. And there's fault. And listen, I'm sorry I've got these things, but this is me. And this in another job I had before is I and it's sorry, I just don't care. Maybe my next job, my career, maybe I will have a little of Daniel in me. I hope to have Daniel. Listen, when you go start a new job, you better be Lord bless it and say, Lord, let me be like Daniel. Then I can sing that hymn. How about before you even, you know, you leave your house to go to work? Lord, let me be like Daniel. And then when you get in trouble because it's not your fault, like Joseph, you still end up with the same position you get, even though you're sitting in a dungeon somewhere. We've got to be faithful without fault, without error. And I'm not saying perfect. Listen, there's anybody who knows that you're not sinless. It ought to be your spouse and your children. But in the workplace, they don't know you that close. You ought to be as, as near to Christ at the workplace than anybody would expect from anybody else. But you got to understand, we're sinners. But Daniel without error, with no blood of Christ, no Holy Spirit in him, no eternal security, no complete Bible. He puts Christians to shame with being saved by the blood. We need to be more like Daniel. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel. Somebody who knows you and wants to get you in trouble, your job, the police, or whoever, can they find something in your life to do it? Would they have to search? Except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. There's one place we can get Daniel. We can get Daniel by serving his God. You don't want that guy around the workplace and all that? Let's have a drinking office party. You won't see him there. Or will they? Let's have a Wednesday night men's bowling. You ought not to see a Christian husband father a Wednesday night bowling with the guys. If he's going to see bowling Wednesday night, be off with the wife and children or with the church. Let's ban the Bible. Let's burn the Bible. Let's get rid of the Bible so he can't read it. Let's make him work on Sundays. Let's make him work in midweek. I'm, I'm under that. I've been given hours now, and I think it may be affecting my Sunday morning service to the Lord. And right now, I don't know if I should take that step to say if they're going to do that and not help me. You say, all right, fine. I, I'm thinking, praying about goodbye. That's a hard choice. Because I don't know what the Lord has next for me with, with his job market.
Don't you know Satan's behind these guys? He wants Daniel to, fa to fall. He wants Daniel to fail. I mean, to fail. And Daniel is not even the line of Christ. I don't see his name in Matthew. I don't see his name in Luke. And have you seen chapter after chapter after chapter how he's trying to kill Daniel? Nebuchadnezzar sends his troops out to get all the, the magicians, soothsayers, and the wise men of, of Judea. Now he's going to be cast into a lion's den. Then these presidents and princes accept Daniel. <laughs> Assembled together the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. And that's just a standard, you know, sugary, diabetically, uh, butter uppy, put the king down as a fatted calf to, to, to roast him up and get a lot of food. No, oh, that is. It's a butterball, turkey. All the presidents, well, not all. If it was all the presidents, Daniel would be there. But all the presidents of the kingdom. Dyrus should be saying, all of them, where, where's Daniel? The governor and the princes and the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute. We're going to make a law. And to make a firm decree, we're going to make a law, that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God, capital G, that was aimed at Daniel and his God, because they worship small g. This law prescribes it is only for Daniel and his God. But it looks like everybody else. Or man for 30 days. Okay. <clears throat> you can't pray to God. Nor can you ask a man for anything for 30 days. You got a cigarette? You got a light? You got 50 cents? Can I get a ride? You can't have it 30 days, a guy sitting outside of Walmart with a sign, please give me some money. That would be against the law, if it's not already. You can't ask anything of God, you can't ask anything of man. Well, you know what you know about these guys? First of all, they'd never pray to a God, because if they did, why would they pass this law? They'd be violating, they'd be violating their own law. And if they did pray to God, they didn't care. We'll just shut our mouth for 30 days. Who cares? And we're not going to ask any man of anything. Who kind of pride there? Even I ask people things that, you know, I'm not going to ask him for nothing. Save the save of thee. Revelation 13, 15. O king. Now here we're back to the flattery again. You know. Only one who can pray in this realm, in this kingdom, is you, king. But all of us, your, your royal subjects, we can't pray for 30 Bible days, which is a month. Petition of God or man for 30 days, save of thee. Which, yeah, it could mean that too. Anybody can come to you. That could be also read like that too. O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. What's that pronoun? In that last part of this verse? I know pronouns because I just took a pronoun test. In two, two of them, three of them, four of them. Did, no, it took two pronoun tests today. Two nouns. Does that say he or they? Wait a minute. 
that whoso shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days. Isn't that like a group of people? But the pronoun points to Daniel, not the people. This law is written to God of Daniel, the God who is who uh, who is of Daniel. The God of the Jews, Jehovah, and this law is pointing that he will should be kept. It's pointing at Daniel. This is Daniel law number one, one, whatever you want to call it. If anybody after this, this law is signed, anybody who makes a petition after this law is signed, they're not going to go after them. If they walk out of the kingdom with this law of sign and there's someone on a prayer mat, they're going to walk on by. But oh, when one man gets down to the law. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters now. The Medes and the Persians had a law that the law was. You couldn't get a loophole. You couldn't change it. You couldn't put an amendment to it. You couldn't put an addition to it. You couldn't put a statute to it. If the law said it, the law said it, and no one could erase it. So the fact is that the Supreme Court said at one time that the uh, the income tax was, was, was a violation of the law, and then turn around and say it's okay to have the law. That would be a violation of Medes and Persians. The first law stated would be the first law. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing in the creed. He didn't pray. We're talking about prayer. Don't you think, King? Okay, I'll, yeah, let me pray about it first. He doesn't pray. He's missing one of his most important loved men. And he's not sinking there scratching his head like, where is this guy? And all of us have gotten together, King. You signed this thing and you're missing somebody. You ever notice Daniel is always missing with the worldly crowd? That's how Christians ought to be. And you better realize when you that these people are against you. They don't love you. They don't care about you. They are out to get you anyway, anyhow. And you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Daniel has no idea what's going on between four and eight. They'll sink your battleship. And you'll be deep underwater. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, the proclamation, here's the law. He knew it. Now, he went into his house. And his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. That's what the Jews were to do. They were even in, a, in a, uh, another country, another place. They were to pray to Jerusalem. This is where the Muslims get it. This is where the Hindus get it. They get it out of the Bible, the law. And yet that law is spoken to Jews, no Gentiles. He kneeled upon his knees, no mat, three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. John 18, 2. He doesn't protest. He doesn't get a lawyer. He does it in the privacy of his home. He does what God tells him to do. And he knows the law has been, <coughs> he knows the law has been signed. Then these men assemble. And you find them... Uh, Verse 4, and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. He's in his chamber. He's in his house. He's got the window open. They are, I, I've always taught this in the Sunday school lesson. It's like, here he is looking out the window, and they're on the other side of the window looking in. Waiting for that moment. That Daniel would get on his knees and pray. Now we got him.
Then they came near and spanked before the king concerning the king's decree. They don't even arrest Daniel. They just leave him there. They go running off to the king. Has thou not signed a decree, which he did, that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save, thee, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into a den of lions? And the king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters not. Yeah, I did that. Now he's going to feel out how his, his lame rulership, how lame it is. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, Ooh, they hate you. Regardeth not they. Why? O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but makest his petitions three times a day. Why is that against the king? The whole thing was this decree. All the king did was sign it. He went against the law, not the king. But they're trying to make it personal now. They're trying to get the king angry. You know, if, if I go down the road and I get I get pulled over and get a traffic ticket for speeding, I didn't do it against the House of Congress and the House of Representatives and the Supreme Court and the person that wrote the law. I did it because I broke the, the law of speeding. And only would a guy try to get me into a courtroom and go up to the judge and say, you know, judge, he broke your law. He disrespected you. And I'll be trying to get that judge angry with me to put me in jail or something or make the fine even worse. No, the charge is prayer. The charge is speeding. It has nothing to do with any man. I bet the king signed plenty of laws. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. Conscience. And set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. There's no blame but blaming himself. It is his fault. That he's in the predicament he is and Daniel is now in. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree or st nor statute which the king established may be changed. They throw the law right in his face. They, weren't they just buttering him up for the fancy over? <laughs> well, king, the law states. You can't do nothing about it. Their goose is going to get cooked. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. <coughs> Anybody normal would not come out of this place. I assume these lions would be very hungry. They wouldn't throw people into lions that were full. That had no purpose. Now the king spank and said unto Daniel, Thy God, Big G. That's King Dyrus, a Gentile speaking. To Daniel, who took all the blame. Whom thou servest continually. Can you add that to the qualifications of what other things were said about Daniel in this chapter? Add, he serviced God continually. He will deliver thee. Look at the insurance this, this guy has. Daniel, I'm going to throw you into a bunch of hungry lions. I don't know how, but God's going to deliver you some way. 
even if you even if you're out full in the morning, God is going to deliver you. There are Christians who don't even believe they can they're eternally saved. They doubt. And a stone was brought. Does that sound familiar? And laid upon the mouth of the den. Does that sound familiar? And the king sealed it with his own signet. Does that sound familiar? So uh, Dyrus becomes Pilate. Daniel becomes Jesus Christ. The lions are, are almost a type of Satan. I've got a poem out there called Lucifer's Feast about Jesus Christ being the Lamb of God. He's cooking and juicing and all oh, Satan. He's got his little oh, least watery and he doesn't get to dine. With the signet of his Lord, royalty. No one mess with that little thing. That the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. In other words, Daniel, you're I'm sorry. You you are a faithful man. Your God is faithful. I gotta throw you in there. And you know what? I'm going to seal this thing. Because when God delivers you, they're not going to say I had anything to do with it. It's amazing because when the Romans threw Christians to lions and all kinds of beef, they would sit in the Colosseum and watch. And I got to wonder, when they did this to people, did they watch or did they just throw them in a den and like Danny leave? Was it entertainment? Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. An unsaved Gentile. And he's fasting. I am having no food. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. He turned off the jukebox. He turned off the radio. And his sleep went from him. He had a sleepless night. With no music and no food. And don't you think he's talking to God? Don't you think he's he's crying at what he just did to Daniel? He would be charged with Daniel's murder because he signed the decree. Now, wouldn't you think that the God of heaven that we know and love is... That says, uh, 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 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. If this king is in this thing right now, don't you think that loving God reached out and worked with him during this? Possibly salvation? Well, everybody to you saved, both sides of wasn't saved. Absalom wasn't saved. Saul, King Saul wasn't saved. Then the king arose. Now see, arose doesn't mean he slept. He told you he slept. He was laying on his bed or sitting very early in the morning. Who's that? Mary. And went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, O oh, Daniel, how is this said? Is this said with confidence that I, he will deliver thee? Is this said that trembling that what the error of his how do you voice these words did he have a little fear 
O Daniel, servant of the living, capital G, God, is thy, capital G, God, whom thou servest continually? That's what the last words he said to Daniel. Able to deliver thee from the lions. And it's the first words that he reaches out to a man that could be dead. The first words we record of Dyrus ever spoken to Daniel is, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he is able to deliver thee. The second words that we see of Dyrus speaking to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lion. How's that for Two first sentences to a man of God. What was Darius looking for? It says that Abraham in the book of Hebrews concerning his son Isaac. It says that Abraham was, if, if, if he had killed Isaac, he would have waited for, sat there for the resurrection. He says, I'm going to go up. He says, I'm going to slay my son. He told the men, we'll be back. Well, you can't slay your son and expect to be back, can you? How much faith did he really have in God? I'm talking about Dyrus. Oh, wait a minute. You got lines here, right? And you throw somebody in there. Are you going to call and say, Oh, Daniel, serving the living God... Are you really going to expect him to come to start speaking if, if he became lion food? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. And that's the standard reading. My God, capital G, has sent his angel. Now, now watch this. And has shut the lion's mouth. They were ready to devour him. Angel stepped down. And said, no, you just keep that thing shut. There's more than one lion down there. He's holding that one's mouth. And he's holding that one's mouth. Now didn't God open the mouth of an ass to, to speak to Balaam? God has the power over animals that he does not have the power over man. That angel went down and told each one of those lines, you just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Man, I want you to go over there and tell them about Jesus Christ. <laughs> Animals listen more to God than man listens to God. How do you like that? And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. If I was God, I would give my life for animals, not man. They listen more. They have not hurt me. So Daniel had in his night while the king was fasting, while the king was in no music, while the king couldn't sleep. Daniel was sleeping there in a craft lion matic bed there. Or paramatic. He slept the night through on these nice comfortable lions. Waiting for someone to come and open that 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 the uh, rock. Did you notice the angel was there? You know there were angels in the tomb of Jesus Christ. Shut the lion's mouth. Uh, I forget how I can't get the verse away, but your adversary is a roaring lion, going about who he may devour. That they have not hurt me. Was Jesus Christ ever hurt? Was he ever touched by the flames of hell? For as much as before him, God, in a sea, who kept declaring Jesus Christ innocent, not guilty, was found in Pilate, and who, who does Darius become? Type of Pilate. This verse is almost like telling Pilate, you're going to eat your words. 
And you know what's funny? It's never recorded in the Bible. The Bible but not, they never got right. Because I think the Bible will record it. Can you imagine what Pilate thought when he heard, when he heard that 400 people proclaimed that Jesus was alive again? Isn't that like a little missing thing? And yet Dyrus finds out, hey, Daniel's alive. You never record those that truly, absolutely ejected and had part in Jesus' death. Their reaction when the 400 people proclaimed that Jesus was alive and well. Never mind the Old Testament saints that were walking around with little, hi, my name is Daniel, hi, my name is David, hi, my name is Solomon, walking around Jerusalem, telling, hey, that was your Messiah, ding dong. Said the Old Testament saints rose up and were in the city. And also before thee, Pilate, I'm innocent, and you you proclaimed I was innocent. Dyrus, you proclaimed I was innocent. Now, did you get that? What was the law? No prayer, right? What did God tell Daniel to do? By the law, to pray. What did God just tell him? As far as the law and what Daniel did, I find nothing wrong with you. Daniel did not violate the human law because he followed God's law. Now, Daniel suffered the man's law. He went to the lion's den. All right, tomorrow they proclaim, listen, you can't go tell people about Jesus Christ in the streets and all that. And Saturday, I go, I go to the farmer's market, and I tell people about Jesus Christ. Go in all the world and preach the gospel, and they send me to jail and do whatever they're supposed to do by their law. When, if I die, whatever happens, God says, I find you innocent because you did what I told you to do. That's a remarkable statement by the Holy Spirit there. In the eyes of man, Daniel was guilty. In the eyes of, of the book of Acts, the, the, the Pharisees and all that, James and John were guilty. In the eyes of God, they weren't guilty. Paul and Silas were guilty in the city of the law. But in the eyes of God, they weren't guilty. That's a remarkable statement right there. O king, have I done no hurt? And he hasn't. Jesus had it. Matter of fact, what is the the word opposite of of no hurt? All Jesus went about healing, didn't he? What did he do wrong? Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. Daniel or God? Which one would you say in this point? Now, Dyrus becomes God the Father. You imagine that moment when Jesus Christ came back to the heavenly throne and stood before the cherubim and four and twenty-four elders and all the angels and his father sit. You imagine what 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 celebration heaven had when Jesus came back in victory? And commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. He's not here. He's risen. They took Daniel up out of the den. He's not here. He is risen. The king arose very early in the morning. Well, wait a minute. Let's take that king. Who's the king of kings? <laughs> How did Darius has become Jesus Christ? Take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him. Well, Jesus has got nail holes in his hands and his feet, and a wound in his side from the spear. Daniel's not a type of Christ all the way. Because he believed in his God. Victory over death. Daniel should have died. And the king, Jesus died. Daniel didn't die. 
And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and the lions had a mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. No angel for them. No protection from God for them. Then Dyrus wrote unto all people, nations, and languages. That's what Nebuchadnezzar did. Go in all the world that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. That's just a standard reading. I make a decree. That in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel, capital G. For he is the living, capital G. You think this guy is converted? And steadfast forever. And his kingdom, not Dyrus, is God's kingdom. That which shall not be destroyed out of mouth confessions made unto salvation. And his dominion shall be ever unto the end. Really, there's no end. He delivereth and rescueth. He worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth. <coughs> Forget the other gods. Forget astrology. That's, that's astrology. Look at the heavens and the stars. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lion's this is Dyrus's law. This is Dyrus's testimony. Recorded in the books, and I don't know if they found this yet, but here it is in the Bible. And if you were to find these fragments somewhere and be able to read them, it would be Dyrus believing in the God of Daniel. So that this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, Daniel gets to live to be a pretty old man in quite a bit of countries and, and authorities. 